I've just developed the first ever pocket saxophone. I've done it because I want to travel and I want to play the blues and I want to, don't want to have to carry a big guitar, saxophone, whatever. I'm not a musician and I looked at different ideas and I've turned up with the first ever pocket saxophone. And I'll show you what it is and what I'm going to do over the course of this lesson is to explain why you, in 28 days, can learn to play this. This just clips together, it's unbreakable, it really is a cool little instrument and not being really a musician of any sort, it will allow you to do this anytime, any place, anywhere. <laughs> Now if that grabs your attention, I can tell you why you can learn to play this in 28 days. Um, first off, I'm going to make a comparison to a lot of other instruments. I'm going to show you a, a harmonica and I'll try and explain why the harmonica is... <laughs> Hard to get out of the box. Have your tools prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, harmonica. Beautiful little instrument. I'm not bagging any harp players. Awesome, played well. But my, my strugglings with it indicate that I've got 10 holes, which means I've got 10 blows. I've got 10 sucks, that's effectively a So 10 blows, 10 sucks. I have individual notes, I have a group of chords, I have a whole lot of hand positioning stuff that I have to do in order to play this well. So I'm figuring there's 40 or 50 things I have to do to play this well. Whereas if you go to the pocket saxophone and it is sa sax, this is sa, it is his sax. <laughs> so with a, with the saxophone I have six holes on the front, one hole on the back. It gives me a total of seven. I've got seven notes. I have to blow and then I have to growl. So really I'm doing about eight or nine things. It gives me volume, um, it gives me a range of tones that you can just listen to. Now if you look at my fingers, there's really not much going on. And what I figured out with this instrument is if you put on some backing beats and it makes you tap your foot or hum, you can play this because it is that simple. There's obviously techniques and over the course of this program I will teach you every technique. And what I think I can do is rewrite some myths on music. This sort of music that I'm playing is, is simple, it is so simple, it requires absolutely no A, B, C's, F sharps, E minor chords, nothing. All you need to do is tap your foot to a beat and then we're effectively humming into the saxophone. The fingers give you some different sounds, I don't know what the sounds are, whether it's an A, a B, a C or a D, I know nothing about that, but what you get as a result of some very simple um, basic techniques is the ability to, to do this. <laughs> now, if you feel like doing that one day, get a sarsax and um, this is a life changer. It gives you an ability to play music, it's a, um, it's a pretty healthy product. If you're old and, uh, or elderly and, and you want to start to play music, you don't need music books, you don't need anything. What I will do is take you through all the techniques, I'll show you where to find backing beats on the internet, I'll show you how to download backing beats, I'll show you, show you how to follow backing beats. Now, what I'm working on is a theory that the street or the beat is your street and you are effectively 
walking down the street, i.e. just walking down the street <laughs> with the beat. And so you find the beat. <laughs> and then you see a side street and you want to go and have a bit of a play up that side street. <laughs> Then you get lost, so you come back to the beat. It is your street, that's where you're walking. And then you find another side street. And always back to the beat. So now, the other thing, great thing about this instrument is it has a reed on it. It's a wind instrument, so it effectively works like a saxophone or a clarinet or anything with a reed. So the reed vibrates to create the sound. And the nice thing about this is by you can change reeds. So you get reeds are graded from one to five. One being the easiest, five being the hardest. One being the, the sort of the roughest sound, five being the smoothest sound. Um, you can also change this bit here, which is the ligature, um, and that gives you a further tone. So, as a learner, you would use a basic ligature and probably a one and a one and a half reed. I currently play a th number three and a half reed because it's all to do with muscles in your mouth. As your muscles develop in your mouth. Um, you have more control over the mouthpiece. So it's an instrument that will last you for life. It'll keep you guessing because you can keep changing the components, these components here, so you can get a plastic reed, um, all sorts of different things. You can shape your reed. So you have a little, little bit of playing with it to improve the sound quality. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's just a range of things. Now, if you choose to follow this course, I'm going to take you through a 28-day program. It's a step by step by step by step. I'm going to teach you an understanding of how this thing works, how to find beats, how to adapt to it. It plays reggae. It plays Pink Floyd if you want the Pink Floyd experience. It plays cool jazz. It plays funky blues. It plays all sorts of soul. It will play absolutely anything. And the trick is find the tone, find the beat, and then the rest is up to your imagination. said you can learn this in 28 days. Now some people are going to go, yeah right, no, impossible, can't do it. Um, some of you who are musically proficient are pick it, going to pick it up in 14 days. Um, for others it might take 56 days, maybe 100 days. But the way I'm going to try and teach this is a new, well it's my method of learning music. Um, if you can imagine paint by numbers. If I gave you a painting book, uh, some colouring pencils or paints, some of you are going to be able to do a pretty good painting. Well, it might not be um, Dali or uh, whoever, Monet, but a few people are going to look at it and go, hey, that's pretty sharp. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is teach you a method of learning music that I've, it's worked for me and I'm sure it can work for other people. It could be applicable to this instrument or I'm sure it could be applicable to several others. So, if it takes you 100 days, it takes you 100 days, but I'm working on the theory of learning to ride a bike. Um, you only ever have to learn it once. 
So I'm going to try and teach you an understanding of how this whole process works. Um, from there, you should be able to understand the absolute basics. And once you understand the basics, then you can progress quite easily. Um, every technique, you'll only have to learn once. Once you've got it, it'll be stuck in your mind for the rest of your life. You never have to learn it again. Um, there's no chords, there's no A, B, C's, F sharps, D's. It's just straight up playing by ear. Now, millions of people have walked up the Mississippi River and, and just jammed away. Um, the, all the old fellas, they say they learn by ear. Uh, but how do you actually do that? And now this is what I'm going to try and teach. Um, this instrument isn't going to allow you to play for the world leading uh, symphony orchestras, but it will definitely allow you to have a huge amount of fun, um, give you a better understanding of music. It's something you can take anywhere with you, play, jam, jam with your mates, and just generally have a good time. So I'm going to take you through the basics, the fundamentals, all the little processes that allow you to get a very funky, cool sound out of this instrument. Um, and it's as simple as paint by numbers, but if, if, you, if you choose to learn it and you want to end up doing this sort of thing, <laughs> Follow the program, try and do it in 28 days, be a bit of an achievement, if it takes you 56, who cares? You will learn and you'll have a huge amount of fun. instrument you're playing, if it's a wind instrument, or for argument's sake you're, you're, you're singing, all you're really doing is recycling the oxygen you're breathing. Now, um, the essence of this instrument, or any wind instrument, wind instrument for that matter, is in the breathing. Um, it is your effective engine or pump. Now, if you understand how this pump works, then you can control your breath in such a such a way that it allows you to create all the tones. Um, for argument's sake, if you play just one note. Um, your breathing or the way you expel the air allows you to increase the volume, decrease the volume. Um, it allows you to growl. It gives you control over your breath. And effectively, the breath is coming out of your mouth over the reed, through the tube, and creating the tone. So I look at it as the breathing is the critical mass to any wind instrument, especially this. So if you can understand how to breathe properly, you are halfway there. Now, what we have, it's a muscle called the diaphragm. It sits under your lungs. Um, it's effectively a muscle and when you inhale, your, your, your diaphragm is breathing down, which is allowing your lungs to expand. The diaphragm is effectively what gives us control. So as we expel the air, if it's being pushed out by the diaphragm, you can control how much air comes out. Um, you can control the volume, the speed, and so forth. That then gives you the, the control over the instrument. Um, the fingers give you the notes. The actual control of the tone is largely coming from down here in your lungs. So the primary, absolute primary um, first steps is to learn how to breathe properly. Now I'm going to show you just an example through using a plastic bag how your diaphragm works. Um, and when you see this you'll sort of understand why the breathing is the most important part. So here we go with the, <laughs> the explanation and, and you should be able to see how this works. So most of us breathe 
if someone was to ask you to breathe in deeply, you tend to breathe and raise your chest. Now that sort of sounds common sense and so forth, but you're not really using the big, biggest space in your lungs, which is down below. So when you play a wind instrument or sing, the trick is to get your lungs completely filled. Um, and that's where you use the diaphragm. So instead of breathing in and raising our chest, what we do as, as wind instrument players is breathe in and, and your diaphragm sucks down and your stomach goes out. So you effectively breathe in and you have your diaphragms full, your lungs are full, which means from this muscle down here, you can control the outflow of air. So, so as the air goes out, your stomach effectively goes in. As the air comes in, your stomach effectively goes out. And what that's really doing is sucking a lot more air into your lungs. It's probably doubling the volume of your lungs. So this breathing technique, the yoga experts know it, probably most good athletes know it. Um, you just get greater capacity. You can control the, your, your breathing longer, you get more volume. So either way, it's a good thing to practice for health and, and sport and so forth. Um, but I'll try and show you how it works with, a, with the bag. So if I was to blow this up, right. So if you imagine when you breathe in, and if you're only using the top half of your lungs, and my hand is the diaphragm, as I squeeze it out, the air will go out, but you won't have a lot of control over it. So you tend to lose your air a lot quicker. Now if I was to blow this up hard, and my hand is the diaphragm, as I push that in, I can control a lot more of the air going through my mouth into the saxophone. You understand what I'm saying? So for argument's sake, That's your lungs, your diaphragm pushes in, which gives you a lot more control, as opposed to having an ear, a lung half full and trying to work it there. So it's a very easy technique to learn. I'll show you an exercise. It's the only exercise you really have to do with this instrument, but once you have it, I think you'll notice that just walking down the street, you'll probably breathe better. Um, if you're doing any sporting activity, you'll find You've got more energy, more, more oxygen going into your lungs. So music aside, it's a damn good technique to learn. Um, I'll show a few ones more. So my hand's the diaphragm, and as I squeeze, my diaphragm squeezes, I can control the air that's passing through my throat into my mouth. That allows me to control the air going through the instrument, and once you've got the control of the air going through the instrument, it will allow you to create all the tones that you need. Um, it's as simple as that. So really, this is the number one bit of importance in this instrument or singing or whatever, is utilizing your lungs correctly. It's effectively your engine or your powerhouse. It's a pump. And your diaphragm is the base of the pump. And as the pump pulls out, sucks air into your lungs, and then you have control or a lot more control over what's coming out over the reed um yeah i think that pretty much covers how your lungs work i'll put in an exercise it's very simple it's just a matter of lying on your bed at night and breathing um so it requires absolutely no energy but the way i will show it you'll actually see how your diaphragm works and you'll be able to concentrate on your breathing technique. You can do this walking down the street, you can do it in the car, it doesn't take long, but it's a, it's a fundamental shift in how most of us breathe, which is to breathe in and raise our lungs or raise our chest. You're filling your, your, your lungs up here, but it's not down here where that's where your diaphragm is and that's where the power of your lungs and this instrument is created from. Okay, an exercise that you can do is lie on your bed, place a book on your stomach, and as you breathe in, the book should raise, or a box, or a cell phone. And 
Okay, now, most people are breathing and trying to raise their lungs here. And you can see if I do this, nothing's happening. So you're not really getting full volume into your lungs. Whereas if you can concentrate on working with your diaphragm, and as you breathe in, you'll see the box going up. As you breathe out, it'll go down. So this is a fundamental shift in breathing. It's a much better breathing technique. You fill your lungs up, you get much greater capacity. Um, it's just a good all-round exercise to do. So you can do this on your bed at night, lie on the floor. It's very simple to, to do. Once more. Now that's your pump working. That's where the energy of this unit comes from. If you do it like that, you're only filling up a half of your lungs. Okay, so I've covered the breathing technique. Now, briefly what happens is, of course, you breathe with your lungs, you've got your energy down here, you then blow out. It's controlled breath. The air then passes over the reed. Now that's the little bamboo piece here. I'll talk more about reed positioning and, and how you work with reeds later on. But effectively the air passes over the reed and the reed vibrates. Now this is what gives you the sound. So this is effectively the sound maker. Your lungs are your energy, but this is what gives you your tone, your sound. All right, I'm gonna have a bit of a chat about the reed. Um, the reed is effectively the the unit that makes the sound, it gives you the sound quality. Um, now the nice thing about this is you can change reeds, um, you can change ligatures, and that gives you a range of, as you improve, uh, just, just, just a range of, or it gives you greater versatility in the sound. Um, straight up I'll just explain the reed positioning. Now. The reed should, when you look at it, you should just see half a millimetre of the mouthpiece sitting behind it. So position this so you can just see, just looking at it, just the, the top section of the mouthpiece. Now, that's, that's your best position. You can play with that a little bit. Um, if you have it past the mouthpiece, you still get a sound, but this is your critical mass and it's very easy to break. So. You have to protect the reeds, and what you'll find is that over a course of time, you'll get better sounding reeds. Uh, when you find one, when you get one, protect it, look after it, use the, the cover. Um, originally, when you buy the unit, it's got a one or a one and a half reed. Reeds are scaled between one and five, one being the easiest, um, but the roughest tone, five being the hardest, but the smoothest tone. Um, if you were to pick it up now and play, try and play with a five, you wouldn't make much progress because the reed it's all to do with the stiffness and it, you've got to get it vibrating and the softer the reed the easier it is to vibrate hence you use a, a number one to start or one and a half um, as your mouth muscles progress and, and get stronger and your your pump your diaphragm is working better then you can upscale your reed and once again they come in all sorts of quality so you get cheap reeds that sound okay but as you get spend a little bit more money on reeds, um, you'll find a, a distinct different tone. Likewise with the ligature. The ligature is the piece that holds the reed into place. Um, I use a material one here that I find, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. It gives a sort of much softer tone than the, the metal ones. Um, but that's something you'll progress into. So your reed position is pretty important position there just so you can see a little bit of the mouthpiece you know half a millimeter of it um, that will not only protect it but it'll also get it in the right position um, when you start out with reed uh, I tend to just sit it in water for a few minutes put in a glass of water um, the other thing is cleaning 
really pays to keep your mouth piece, piece clean. You do a lot of spitting down it. Um, gets a lot of gunk and shit in there. So uh, it's definitely worth every now and again scrubbing it out, taking the whole thing, uh, taking the ligature off and the reed off and giving it a good clean. And, and what you find is because this is the passage where the air flows through, any, any little obstructions in there is going to alter the, the course of the air. Um, which once again creates a, a, a different tone. They become harder to play, um, and if you do play this for a while, you, you'll find a reed that suits you. You get plastic reeds, once again they have a different tone, but generally a lot, lot longer lasting. Um, you get certain reeds that you just don't want to lose, but eventually they, they fall apart, um, they crack on the tips and so forth. So yeah, to have a, a, a good conditioned reed will assist a lot with playing. Um, our friends have tried playing and they break the reed and they wonder why they can't get a particularly good sound and they have to blow like anything. Well, this is the valve, this is the, the noise maker, so that has to be kept in good condition. Um, yeah, and definitely experiment with different reeds over the course of time. Um, you'll find some that are very easy to blow but they don't make such a sweet tone and, and um, others they make this beautiful tone. Um, you might not get it originally, if you, if you step up, say, from a one and a half reed up to a two, two and a half, you might struggle blowing it, but once you've got the tone again, then you won't want to go back. Um, so, yeah, look after your reeds, experiment a bit with them. Um, you know, you might be quite happy with the one it comes with, but there really is a, a, quite a bit you can do just with the, the, the tone by changing the ligature and the reed. Um, but really, that, that's the only two things you need to change. Um, yeah, just look after it and treat it how you like to treat everything, mostly. <laughs>